Welcome back to our second water self-sufficiency webinar. Today I am going to teach you how to convert your biological sanitation unit for water or constructed wetland that we created last time in from a 1000 liter flow burn into a forever shower by splitting the wetland in half and creating a 2.4 square meter continuous cycling water treatment unit. And then I'm going to take you on a tour of our entire off the water grid property here in Johannesburg North. You're going to see a variety of low cost, low tech projects that we have constructed with our bare hands and those of the hands of unskilled, unemployed South African labor. So I look forward to be sharing with you this awesome knowledge that I have taken over 10 years to collect from various masters in the fields of permaculture and ecological water treatment. Let's go on a journey together. Can you believe it that this is at exactly the same wetland which we have constructed just over there using one 1000 liter flow burn and because majority of the roots only go to about 50 60 centimeters deep you can use one drum to create a double wetland yes that's right a 2.4 by 1 square meter wetland made all from one drum and right now I'm going to show you how to turn this wetland into a forever shower by looping the water over and over again. So what you'll need for this, a submersible pump. I use a, quite a cheap 18 watt pump. The shower connector. And voila! By installing the submersible pump into the outlet pipe and then standing just above the wetland we're able to basically loop water over and over and never lose water except for evapotranspiration that's happening through the leaves out into the sun but you can even cap that by placing a box and a simple aluminium box or PVC with a cover of a clear vinyl to allow the sunlight to come in and also obviously it will regulate the plant's temperature in winter and then any water that will evaporate will actually condense on the plastic or glass and drop back into the wetland so the same water is used over and over again let me show you how i've done it a simple hose pipe fits straight into a submersible pump then you get a simple 15 millimeter connector with the thread that you can either screw your shower head on or you can screw in a typical hose plug and now with a simple reducer you can connect that to a shower head and easily connect the entire thing remember your washer <laughs> straight to that and now I can extend this if you want more of a flow you will need to use a stronger pump but this is a simple 18 watt <sighs> $15, 175 Rand, really simple number. And what I actually like about it is because of the slow movement of water over and over, that's what you need. You don't want to push the water too fast because the treatment is happening in the root area and we want the water to go slowly. So now I'm going to submerge the pump straight into the outlet. Let me take the camera and show you because it's a jungle out there. Wow, <laughs> look at that. How is this filter? that's amazing now right in the corner there let's go have a look oh look at all this life here we go look at this outlet because if you construct the wetland properly you don't really need maintenance your first wetland would be where you would shower with smaller plants and then the bushy plants would be in the next wetland. I'm gonna take into the classroom and show you how it will all work. But it's working. It's circulating the water over and over and looping it around. And the plants obviously doing all the treatment. So let's go show you the mechanics behind this thing. No smell. No smell. This is gray water from washing machine, um, bath. All our showers and baths are connected to this and as well as the washing machine so obviously no kitchen water here because that's just too dirty no toilet water but gray water look at that so if this is circulating I would leave the pump on because it's only 30 watt 
this was an 18 watt i'd get a much stronger pump maybe a 30 30 40 watts so it can do about a three four meter head easily with a certain nice flow see how many liters not too fast i would say 10 liters a minute at the height of three meters that'll be a really nice flow 10 15 liters a minute somewhere there at three meters high you, you actually get a graph on the pump and you can see it. so it wouldn't be a more than 30 watt but look at that it's amazing the water is circulating around and around so i'm going to take you now and show you the mechanics behind this forever shower just so you can understand what will happen in the first wetland what will happen in the second wetland let's go here would be the, our first wetland <clears throat> so we'll take the drum so it's got a cage and you basically split it there is a middle bar, middle gap. You split it here, split it here and here, the middle bar and the middle bar. So you'll actually lose about this much of the drum. Then you turn it upside down, you leave this red lid that's in here, you leave it screwed in, and you've got basically two containers, okay? Which in essence will look something like that. In the first container, <clears throat> you would place um, chunky gravel and then you'd place some sand so gravel I'd say because the whole container will be about 40 centimeters so I'd say gravel about 25 uh, 5 centimeters of sand and then here you can do some nice pebbles so you can stand or you can do an interesting maybe put a nice big tile here half by half meter nice big block that you can stand on and what else i would do the, the trick here is to maximize the surface the, the plant area that you know so although we're dealing with 2.4 square meters for us to make it into a forever shower we need to have a maximum plant so what i would even do is i would put a little wire cage just so you know you can stand inside walk in and stand inside and i'll explain to you why and i'll pack the rest of the plants here i would maybe do nice pebbles here so it looks beautiful white stones you know uh, whatever you want <laughs> but here i would leave the soil about 10 centimeters of soil okay there's your stone yeah okay and here's your cage it would, it would stand like up there yeah and then you'd you'd shower in, in, the, in that in that cage so it will be just around you maybe one meter wide depends on your size obviously um just something simple from a fence and four poles going down or six poles just to keep it upright really simple job nothing too fancy okay and then i'd pack the rest with plants and i'd like really i'd boom it <laughs> papyruses all types of aquatic plants obviously the tallest ones on the um, south side on and the shortest one on the northern side just so they don't shade each other that's generally how we even work with food forests so i pack this with plants pack it really nice and maybe even do a little cage extended here so the plants don't creep forward the reason for this cage is so you can have an open space and plants are not bothering you while you're showering and then that's the cage uh, which would hold your shower head and then the, the the cable the pipe would run down and the mechanics are as follows <clears throat> This water is going to drain down. Okay, the first thing is we want even dispersion. Now, what I would even do, I would uh, make this a plastic sheet. The, uh, I would put a whole um, plastic sheet underneath so that will make sure that the plants don't go from under your feet. Rather, let the water go out into all directions from here. Okay, so plastic under your cage and then let the water run down test it out see how it flows but basically you want water to just go through the the, the soil the sand and the gravel and all these uh, plants must uh, treat the water okay so they so because if you're going to make lots of holes here all the water is going to go through and it's not going to reach the plants i mean the plants will be doing the treatment underneath the ground but you want to actually top down 
all right the other thing i would add for maximum treatment i would put a 20 liter bucket here and here you might need to reinforce but i would put a 20 liter bucket right here let me draw this bucket for you and again with 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 the bucket what i would do is i put chunky gravel here maybe 19 mil up until this level i put a 13 mil here i would put coarse sand like such as found in the barracuda shop for the pools and uh, possibly even some finer sand but not too fine like uh, but even even that barracuda sand i would just leave it all the way to the top and i'd let the water go through this bucket and i'd also add more plants here pack it with plants really and then have that water go through here have a little sprinkler type of uh maybe sitting here in the center and spraying water but not you know going all over but just in that bucket so the water will go through and because you've graded your different um, stones biggest one being at the bottom the water will just fall fall down nicely so the smallest one is your barracuda your 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 pool sand that's about two and a half millimeter granules two millimeter granules and then you'd have lots of holes drilled here and this is going to be your shower okay so the water will run down and shower you and, and another thing i'd do is i'd use a stronger pump because that 18 watt is just not doing it i got it for experiment for you i knew i know this is going to work but i just got it for experiment because i don't need a forever shower i've got 200,000 liters of drinking water here in my pool um, with all the storage i've created but you know you're going to have the basically um, the mechanics are is that you're going to have your overflow pipe and that will be at your 100 wrapped in budum same story we're not going to have inlet rock entrance on this first one but we are going to have it on the second one and i've shown you already how to do that so you you're going to have a, a 50 mil pipe coming out here and here you're going to have your rock entrance with big rocks and what happens here is um, because this is wrapped in plastic the water gets forced down comes up travels maximum distance and here you have I'd go for 20 centimeter diameter pipe just to accommodate a stronger pump size wise and that's it I wouldn't actually close it out I would make a 50 mil outlet make sure that this outlet is slightly lower than that outlet so, and then you'll put a cap so when you don't have a water with problem with you know you could divert that water to a sump which is a much lower point which i teach in, in my course and that will be a pump a strong pump will be sitting there and sending it all over the garden but for now you'd close it off and maybe put a valve here so it doesn't leak or just close it off nicely with a 50 mil cap and uh, you'd put your submersible pump here and you could have the 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 cable the pipe running along the surface around the drum and that will basically come up here and go into your bucket and then that's where you stand and shower that's the mechanics i'd love to hear how you go about it um, and tip of advice natural shampoos um, preferably no sodium lara sulfate because uh, stuff can go funky you know because you're using such a small wetland look if your wetland is big enough like 10 15 meters with a biochar filter i'm sure you could even drink that water after that but because it's such a small wetland i'd strongly recommend using more natural shampoos and keep your pump circulating 24 7. okay it's only 30 watts 30 50 watts nothing too hectic on electricity wise but because that 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 circulation of through is gonna what, what's gonna do the treatment and then here you would um obviously remember that on this drum this is your second drum your rock entrance would be here and then your outlet pipe would be in the opposite angle you could add some baffles okay which allow water to basically um sorry i would uh, okay i would let the water go through basically just the water travels all the way around okay creating a maximum distance i would i would do the baffles in this constructed wetland so it's little plastic plates or 
you could get a plastic company to join it for you or you could silicone it but basically some form of diversion to let the water travel the longest path because as it travels the longest path at 10 liters a minute through a, through a 500 liter drum 400 liter drum it's going to do awesome treatment and then that's where your pump sits and voila it pushes the water to your shower so that's how i see the mechanics at the bucket because that'll give you an extra 40 square meters of treatment area and every square meter counts especially in the city where we're tight on space but yeah that that would be it if the water starts going funky know that in the beginning the get bigger plants don't get tiny plants get proper size plants that they can immediately root up get go, going uh, the root system can do the immediate treatment go and visit the local dam dig out some plants they'll replenish themselves guaranteed the more you take the more the they'll replenish just don't take from one space take one here take one here it will not do any damage to the ecosystem so you could actually plant this out totally for free you don't need to go anywhere so really and the second hand drum is 30 dollars in south africa 400 rand um, totally affordable that's it for the forever shower enjoy the forever water i'd like to just bring out a few key questions that some of our subscribers have been asking over and over again so cutting pipes is no rocket science as you can see behind me <laughs> We have cut and trimmed and pipes left, right and center. Um, here is the bath water that uh, uh, comes out here. That's now going to the wetland. Here's the shower, the sink. Um, we have installed the toilet uh, flushing device. So all the gray water is, being, is flushing the, our toilet. Cutting of pipes and joining them takes literally minutes. So it's just the most important thing is to get the levels correct so the water flows where you want it to. That's the most important thing to remember. The next question is how do I take care of my needs without depleting the water table? Well, Look, it's important to remember that for the water to absorb into the ground, it needs to be slowed down and you need to have earthworks like such as contaline berms, little speed bumps on contaline that allow the water to stop there and sink and infiltrate. So if you are doing the earthworks in the garden, then by all means you're more than welcome to put the borehole uh, inside because then you're replenishing the groundwater table and then you can suck some out. But until people do earthworks they shouldn't be allowed to be putting boreholes because our water levels are dropping pretty rapidly underground you see without the earthworks the water just skims over the top and if the rain the rain cannot get into the compacted soil at all so without the earthworks we would be running out of water completely at the rate we're going in about 20 years so every single borehole will need to be gone deeper and deeper and that's just totally not sustainable another interesting question is how to create a mobile um, abundance of water system that can be used in the rental property okay so it's important to show you here that the biochar filter that i'm going to be showing you just now is uh, the, the drums are 60 centimeters diameter those 200 liter drums and four of them fit exactly on a pallet so you could because we the way that we do the biochar system you can dismantle it and take out the gravel into the sandbags yeah, because those sandbags are quite strong and basically dismantle and take out all the ingredients and reassemble it at the new property the same goes for the constructed wetlands which we did in the, those flow bins those thousand liter flow bins they already come on a pallet with a cage and a, and, and, and a waterproof drum ridiculously cheap <laughs> like 400 rand a drum and that's also uh, the same way you remove all the in, in plants gently uh, put them into wrap them in newspaper the roots so they stay wet um, and then you know the ingredients again can go into thick strong sandbags and then you can relocate it with a small pickup or bucky you can move it to a rental property really really easily Another fantastic question from you guys is how to treat grey water without the smell or mosquitoes. 
That's a brilliant question. You see, in the grey water, in a constructed wetland, the roots do all the cleaning for you. So these lovely plants take out all the nitrogen and the nutrients which actually cause smell and they suck it up for their own growth and fertilization. So the plants end up thriving whilst taking up all the smelly stuff out. And the way we construct our wetlands is um, you've got three layers there. You've got the gravel, which is the stone. So, and the gravel gets set up to the level of the water. Then there is sand and then there is soil. And the sand acts as a barrier for soil to mix in with the gravel. And then when you've got young plants, you plant them th into the soil and a little bit into the gravel so they can reach the water immediately. And so what happens is the water you, is actually nowhere to be seen. The water is all in the gravel and then there is sand and soil above that. And the soil acts as a biological filter stopping all smells from going out if there are any which I haven't experienced in doing this for quite a few years and um, the mosquitoes of course they can't get in or out because there is 20 centimeters of soil and sand above the water level so that's how we do the grey water system safely without any smell or algae or anything dodgy in your garden. Another quite um, important question is how to legalize a grey water system. Well, in America, where there is most lawsuits, where the municipalities are really, really strict, this is how the airships have done it. They use a three-way valve, which you can see right now on the screen. And the three-way valve allows you to um, move your grey water through the wetland and out into your garden. Or, if you turn the lever, it takes that same grey water to the sewer. So, should the municipalities ever do an inspection, in their mind, this is just perfect. Because it means that it's just a bypass. And should there ever be a problem with your grey water system that you made at home, then you can, you know, they know that you can just turn the water to sewer and for them, in their head it is the same system it just have a little diversion <laughs> to via a grey water uh, constructed wetland so that's the way they legalize it in america and they've done it to thousands of homes with a three-way valve okay here comes a really fun question what is the return on investment in terms of a whole year um, with this water system so here it's important to lump three components together so let's talk for, for, for sake of exercise about a 12,000 liter ferrocement storage tank. Which you, and the reason it's 12,000 liters, it uses optimal materials um, to, 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 to create it. So that um, takes about a weekend with five people and the cost of that is no more than um, $300 or 5,000 Rand. And that's 12,000 liters, okay? Then that water, obviously will come off your roof uh, I'm assuming you've got some gutters which they put in majority of the homes right now okay so the water stored in the tank you've got 12,000 liters and you've got the biochar filter which on materials and the gravel and the biochar and everything you need and all the plumbing we have constructed it in two days with three to four people and um, the cost of that is about 3,000 Rand or $200 um, with labor and everything else so if you're using your friends obviously you can bring the price down and then the last system is of course this gray water constructed wetland which allows you to utilize the 12,000 liters that you've showered and been bathing with to reuse it again in the garden so now you with that system which takes a day <laughs> for three people uh, or even two people and uh, also about 2,000 Rand or $150 only. Um, so now you've got 24,000 liters that you'd usually draw from municipality. Now you've got that available. So, and that ferrous cement tank, depends on the size of the roof, can fill up after one good rain. So you could use that water twice a month. So let's say that that water tank during rainy season will allow you to be completely disconnected off the grid of the municipal water grid and you have 24,000 liters for half the year okay 
so the cost return on investment depends on the price of your water I've calculated that you can pay off the entire system in less than a year and then for the rest of your life for the next hundred years you have free water and obviously to be completely off the water grid you just need to build more storage and as I said those are three hundred dollars a pop and you've got twelve thousand liters and then you can link them up and off you go so for me that's pretty exceptional return on investment if any of these answers are unclear or there's something you're unsure of please post your comments into the comment section underneath this webinar and we will attend to it in the best way possible and for the rest of us who have no choice but to use the tap water for bathing and drinking with maybe a small water filter at home majority of these chemicals are still entering our bodies and they accumulate in our in our kidneys and our livers completely taking out the joy levels increasing the frequency of the diseases flu and of course our intuition goes out of the window because we're just so polluted by all this junk um, in fact we're being slowly poisoned from outside in through our skin and inside out through our digestive system but it's not all doom and gloom this biochar system behind me we made ourselves with three people in one weekend and including the biochar which we got cut our own we got wattle for that and burnt burnt our own biochar in the gasifier oven the whole procedure was a weekend and it cost us no more than 2000 rand or 150 dollars and um, it delivers 300 liters of pristine spring water into the house at 300 liters per day if you were to cost a standard system out that will give you 300 liters uh, per day you'll be shocked to hear that it's roughly 50,000 rand or at least four thousand dollars and the quality of water is practically the same all right so let's go on a journey through our secret self-sustainable garden and where I'm going to show you some of these simple systems that we have made lovely lemongrass and mint and beauty beautiful herbs growing here but what I want to show you is the the sewage pipe that we've shown you um, that's going towards a biogas digester sloping at three degrees all the way down from around the corner all the way and the biogas digester is just there you can't really see it because it's underneath the ground and that biogas digester in just a couple of weeks will be providing us with methane gas mainly for cooking to top up for cooking and uh, we'll plummet back into our so our gas geyser so we'll have backup gas if that other gas runs out using our methane from poo <laughs> from our toilet water here you can see behind me some of the multiple earthworks that we've done we've massively terraced our entire garden so before it was all slopey and we've just made it into terraces that are taken all the rain water that comes down from the sky and just soaks it up like a sponge there is no soil erosion um, and we're basically recharging the ground water and the, these beds with mulch uh, compost and then mulch retain the water for weeks after the last drain so you use up to 12 to 15 times less irrigation or less rain that you need to keep this bed nice and juicy so here is our awesome pool <laughs> and that's the filtration that I wanted to show you a solar pump lying in the pool one panel and uh, the water is just silently circulating and it's dropping through back into the pool and this is amazing living water Th this is what we should be striving for and as I said earlier having a hundred and twenty thousand liter backup of water that you can drink is just phenomenal I mean I don't even need a filter to drink this water the, I, I know my plants I know my plants they're doing all the great work this is clear phenomenal this water is amazing so even in the tiniest of spaces a balcony or patio you could grow a variety of microgreens and leafy greens that will provide you with all the nutritional 
value that you actually need. I mean, like this food grower is growing 120 vegetables on 1.2 square meters, as well as 10 trays of wheat grass, seedlings, and microgreens. Just five minutes a day, that's all I'm spending on this. And it's growing an abundance of vegetables. I mean, look at this creeping spinach. It's gone up my window, which could be your balcony. And <laughs> totally edible. The tomato plant that flew out of there. <laughs> it's got fantastic little tomatoes. It's just abundance of food on such a small space. Just to remind you that sprouts and microgreens have up to 10,000 times more nutritional value per weight than the full grown plant. That's because the seed shoots all the nutrients into the little seedling and it's just full of really awesome goodness. And the best part of all, it is irrigated by treated gray water that you just had a bath and shower with yesterday and all of this abundance is just pumping through and it has your, well this food has my DNA because of my skin particles that rub off whilst I shower and bath and that um, skin carries my DNA so all these vegetables are impregnated with my DNA and they have my information about the body so if I ever get sick they know about that even before I do and by growing them out um, I'm able to get the nutrients from the cosmic forces and the earthly forces of everything I need to stay healed and healthy. Imagine your brain firing up after eating this nutritionally dense, freshly picked organic produce and then you're increasing your intuition so you could listen to your inner voice with such clarity, almost the same way as your close friend speaking right in your ear. That is the power of freshly grown organic produce that's picked right there and then, juiced and produced into uh, nutrition for your body. What would it feel like to be so clear within yourself after eating this nutritionally dense food that you can partner up with our Creator manifesting your dreams and possibly avoiding those misfortunate circumstances that keep on happening to us every time we are off our path or not following our divine purpose on earth. What if you could turn your karma into labor of love, connecting with living things out there in the garden or in your balcony and inspiring others to do the same? Just gardening a little bit here and there brings such joy to me and I just want to share it with everybody else. So here's some lovely new additions. We've got a rocket stove that uses a handful of sticks to make a meal. A solar oven that can bake at about 150 degrees Celsius. I'm getting a vacuum tube that goes up to 300 degrees Celsius, uh, which I don't have as yet. And here's solar dish that you can boil water, cook a meal um, for free for the rest of your life. And just to show you the power of the sun, <laughs> watch this. <laughs> if this is not approved enough, I don't know what else will work. <laughs> so here is a, a sandbag water tank that we've constructed, 16,000 liters. <laughs> the cost of materials were a thousand rand. Maybe 2,000 rand with waterproofing and um, 16,000 liters and that's going to be feeding our biochar filter and what's feeding the tanks is all our gutters and from both roofs. The thatch roof we've created the gutters and the tin roof. So that's feeding the tank. Let me show you. So right behind me is the 16,000 liter water tank. Um, as you can see the leaf catchers are important parts of uh, any storage because they keep the muck away. We were the, probably one of the first crazy people in the world <laughs> that put the gutters onto the thatch and what I had to do is make socks for the gutters using uh, shade cloth which trap all the debris that's coming off the grass as it degrades away. Um, and this is the latest addition, it's called the first flash from our tin roof because we don't have a leaf catcher there. So all the bird poo and pollution and dirt 
r runs uh, into the tank, this tank, when this tank fills up, then the excess water fall into our main tank so we get much cleaner water. And this valve behind me will extend the pipe and run it to irrigate the compost pile. And the reason for that thick valve is so we can blast the water out with all the leaves and, and muck and bird poo uh, one time. So with the total water storage of 200,000 liters in this tiny property in the middle of the city, without tapping into ancient aquifers, you would agree with me that I have taken self-sustainability with my passion to a whole new level. So here's a lovely component, <laughs> got an avocado tree coming out, but a lovely component is a earthworm bath. You can use a real upcycled bath or in our case we're using a, a piece of a thousand liter drum. So it's got a pipe that comes down here and basically um, earthworm tea just drips out into this bucket daily and then we can put it to our plant so that's liquid gold. Um, we feed them kitchen waste, no citrus, no onion, no meat, no fish, no fat. So banana peels, tea bags, uh, everything else. Uh, uncooked generally and all the peels go here and we've got millions of worms, millions and they are eating this with your green grass clippings <laughs> and they turn it into soil in two weeks. So feed them green grass or brown leaves and your kitchen waste and they wee out liquid gold and let me show you the worms. Oh you're gonna love this, don't get a fright. This is what's <laughs> doing the job. Look at that. That's just that's that's my bath is just full of that. And they eat twice their weight in I think a day. Twice their weight in a day. That's just awesome. That's biology doing the cleaning of the smelly stuff that you smell behind the garbage trucks. No smell. Could probably eat this. <laughs> so this is the pump that delivers three bar pressure from the biochar filter into the house on demand. As we open the tap, the pump kicks in and we've got pressurized spring drinking water in all of our taps in the house. And here is an earthwork spiral. It's going to catch over a million liters of water in the ground. Let me show you how it works. I've chosen a floodplain where I've got a lot of water flooding in my garden which is right here and that's where I started to dig the spiral. It goes all the way around, gets deeper, 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 deeper so the water can flow all the way in. We're going to fill it with logs, big logs, not too big but chunky logs. Just going to pile them up right to the top, then we're going to put some sticks, mulch, compost and soil. I'm going to pull the excess soil back over and then I'm probably going to get, because we've been actually naughty, we've been stealing some of the soil for some of our other stuff. <laughs> but generally what happens is when you dig out this, the, the soil, it goes onto these bumps nearby and then when you fill the whole thing with logs, you don't need as much soil because it's pretty full. So you'll pull some of the soil back and uh, what happens is any water coming in, look how deep it is, it's, it's extremely deep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll travel all the way from there into the spiral. Also, any water coming from the top of the mountain will come in and drop in. By the time I'm finished, you're not going to know that anything like this even exists because it's all going to look like a normal level garden. But the technology of Earthworks is going to be working fantastically in, allowing the water to travel all the way in, flood the garden, hydrate the soil, Pull up the water level because water likes water, so hydrology at its best. We're maximizing the surface area and here we're going to plant a food forest garden which love rotten logs because rotten logs provide fungi and fruit trees, they love fungi. So that's what's going to be happening in this super cool spiral. Let's go to the next journey. I think I'm almost going to drown in this thing, <laughs> it is so deep. So here's our biodiesel plant that will be producing um, diesel for our vehicles from the restaurant, upcycled oil, that's really awesome and then the, the washout will flush into a biogas digester to produce methane gas again, closing the loops. And here's our lovely solar system with the battery bank behind me 
that provides for all of our electrical needs, keeping us completely off grid. So we're actually operating autonomously from the government system. So here's a ferro cement tank, an awesome contraption. <laughs> Can build it for 5,000 Rand and it takes 12,000 liters of water. So that's more than two and a half times cheaper than actually getting a plastic water tank. And a weekend with a couple of friends, like five people, <laughs> could get this thing done. So here we've got uh, our first biochar system that we constructed. It was on a pallet originally, now we've separated it a bit. And basically this ferro cement tank uh, behind me that will feed these drums. And the drums provide us clean drinking water to the house. It uh, gives us 300 liters per day. And here's a tap of really phenomenal <laughs> uh, drinking water. So plenty abundance. <clears throat> so here is another massive uh, pavement. I mean, it's about 200 square meters, <clears throat> which can get a lot of water. So what we have done is I've created, that's the lowest point there was those four pipes. And I'm going to show you where, the, where they go because that's really was one of the crucial systems here. And whilst I'm here, just to show you, these are, these are the terraces that we have created to sponge up whatever rain comes from the sky. All right, so here we've got <clears throat> four pipes and let me explain to you where they go. All right, so here's just another angle. Just have a look there. That's, that's the four pipes that I was just talking about. <clears throat> so the one pipe comes in here underneath this concrete and goes to flush out the trench. So that's, that's, that it comes out just, just there underneath the step. <clears throat> and ba the trench runs along these stepping stones. Uh, I know the garden is messy, but <laughs> we just haven't got to it with my leg. But uh, basically the trench runs underneath there and the trench is filled with sticks and uh, yeah, just lots of sticks. So all these stepping stones are actually quite spongy when you walk on them. And that allows the kitchen water from the grease trap that you learned last week to enter the trench really fast. There is a fat pipe, um, 40 mil pipe that's running. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, so that's, that's feeding from the grease trap, that black pipe, okay? And then in the trench, it's got uh, 50 mil, or no, actually one centimeter holes cut into it every half a meter at five o'clock and seven o'clock. The reason that we cut those holes at five and seven o'clock is so the dirt does not get in. And they basically release the water every half meter along this whole trench. And the trench is level, absolutely level. And it's on contour line and uh, and the soil from the trench on this side will made a bump which you don't see here because it's all overgrown with pumpkins and that bump is basically what is you plant all your herbs flowers and that bump will be forever wet because as you as the um the the, the pipe releases water into the trench and the trench is filled with sticks so sticks allow the water just to exit then we have another pipe here which basically allows the water to exit out of there and it all falls into this gravel and the gravel as you know allows water to travel through so the the water copious amounts of water travels through this gravel and I've made branches that go left right left right and basically feeds into the vegetable garden um, I'll show you right uh, just now okay the third pipe um, goes to the aquaponic system which is still messy we haven't finished it we're probably going to remove this line and do a nice plastering job and there is the pipe just to show you here it is so 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 that's the fourth pipe and then it will feed aquaponic system but as i said we we haven't touched it yet but you know i've made provisions for it and then the fourth pipe which enters here you can see a bit of detail Okay, so that's the fourth pipe. I've reduced it to, uh, and that 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 basically drops in here, and um, will feed this wetland that overflows into that wetland, which overflows into those two wetlands. So I've perfected the system so well that within two minutes, after <laughs> I release the bath and shower water, it irrigates our entire garden automatically with these sprinklers, and it's treated gray water 
no smell at all, <laughs> and I'm getting completely wet. <laughs> that is the power of self-regenerative design. This is the power of what you can do with permaculture and applying your God's given brain. So this is just our latest wetland made out of bricks. Um, so hence it hasn't been yet established, but an established wetland eventually looks beautiful like that. So we're just still working on this work in progress. Um, quite experimental, <laughs> but yeah. Let me show you what happens with this gravel. Oh, sorry, whilst I'm here, important, this is a really, really, really cool tool. Uh, you can get it on eBay, I haven't found it in South Africa. It's called a siphoning pump for automotive industry to drain carburetors. So my bath downstairs is way too low. So I, I cannot enter the wetland because the, all the plumbing is hidden and you're going to have some of your downstairs um, toilets and I mean bathrooms and showers. The plumbing is just hidden. So what I do is you put a pipe here, you put a pipe here and this thing could live uh, just outside the window. You suck it up and it's basically like a siphoning that, that you know, the experiment and then you pull it down. So this is what this pipe does. It does that movement and basically sucks up the water from the bath. Then you have the other pipe lower at your wetland and basically drains the bath right out for a hundred rand. <laughs> yeah, all the bath water just gets drained. That's no plumbing, no cutting of pipes. This is fantastic piece of equipment and it will allow you to start experimenting with saving 200 liters every time you bath and even you could drain it to a nearby tree. So this is our latest addition. <clears throat> We've just plumbed this up so when the pump from the grey water wetland was treated um, bath and shower water um, switches on to irrigate the garden it also pumps water right filling that entire system up and then the idea is to have the filter doing additional treatment so the water can um, come out in the toilet really clean. <laughs> Not that you want it super clean, but it's going to look seven star and clear. Um, there is the gas geyser, which is awesome system that's uh, to get off the grid in terms of electricity. So what we did here that's so different is um, we created a, a special temperature valve that allowed the that kicks in the gas geyser when the solar geyser drops below 55 degrees. And because this is a biological system outside, as you can see, we had a bit of hail, uh, some hail damage, but still thriving, phenomenal. There's a sugar cane behind me. Look at these papyruses. And <laughs> this is half a meter deeper than me. So they actually, the ground level is here for them. So here is another system, uh, well, same system, so this gravel that gets that massive amount of uh, runaway water from the pavement, the water will enter here and disperse into the garden. I've got these branches, I've got three of these branches created down the garden and basically it will feed the garden passively with water every time it rains and the excess will go into the garden, uh, into the aquifer. Oh, look at this butternut, oh gosh. There's produce everywhere. <laughs> I hope it hasn't... Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. So, you know, although it looks messy, there's food. <laughs> there's great food and a lovely butternut I'm going to enjoy tonight for soup. And here I am walking on top of a 50 meter long wall that weighed over 300 tons that we made with our hands using earth and sandbags. And we've interweaved pockets where additional 20,000 liters of water can be stored inside our wall in these segments <laughs> which are going all the way down. That is a really awesome project. We just completed at the end of last year. Here I'm standing in the building site of our future Eco Dome home. It will be standing right above a 40,000 liter reservoir. We're creating a shallow dome going to create a ferro cement roof here, pack it up with a flooring and then we'll have a whole dome home right above it. There'll be a bathroom there, a bedroom and a little kitchenette in the front side. So this is just awesome. An entire off-grid home with 40,000 liters of water 
for under seven thousand US dollars that's a real winner <laughs> let's go in the following video I will be showing you an entire mind map that will show you how all the other systems all work together such as chicken tractor which is crucial in the garden um, compost piles that can generate water uh, food forest as well as buy intense vegetable garden and all the waste and how it can all link up together creating an entire web of an ecosystem in your garden that you do not have to spend much time managing this because systems are self-maintaining um, for example if you have a little uh, chicken coop and that you make the up up flow from your veggie garden <laughs> every time the chickens scratch that stuff is easily and, and will be moved towards your garden fertilizing your garden with chicken manure so that will be next week session where we're going to be doing a whole mind map so look out for that it'll be really really exciting after running a few live workshops in the secret garden last year we have had some really awesome comments and testimonials and also good feedback and questions from participants about how to get their home towards sustainability i hope you have enjoyed the tour of our garden and everything i hope you have enjoyed the tour of our garden and everything you've learned today and please scroll below leave a comment let me know what you're thinking any ideas or any, any suggestions or any questions that you have all are welcome i'll try and answer them as we go along and in the next session i'm going to show you my latest invention an off the water grid trailer you're going to love it because it's the combination of all of these systems that i have created in a mini condensed mobile version that can be plugged into any house or taken mobile on the road bringing water self-sufficiency wherever you go i will also go through a full water self-sufficiency mind map as well as garden ecosystem so look out for the training in a couple of days with my latest invention water self-sufficiency trailer in just a couple of days and until then scroll below leave a comment i'd love to hear what you're thinking and may you start experiencing a full abundance of water around your garden and home